Hey, Miyagi here, and I'm the lead sound design trainer with Vespers.ca. Today we're going to look at making Ableton's analog and a series of effects perform a pretty convincing Roland TB303 emulation with lots of macro control for easy tweakability. So let's have a quick listen to the loop. <laughs> So it's sort of a throwback acid house loop, very simple with a nice gliding 303-esque pattern and some really audible acid effects coming from my macro controls. Be sure and follow along and feel free to download this instrument rack for free from the links below. So let's have a look at how to set this up. To start, let's drop an instance of analog onto a MIDI track. I've got a MIDI pattern already created here, so let's have a look at it and then play the initialization patch. Since the 303 is a mono synth, let's immediately switch up the voices to mono. Now we're going to select a sawtooth wave in our oscillator section, and I'm going to drop it two octaves. These types of sounds sound good across a wide range, so don't be afraid to pitch it up at some other point. Feel free to use a square wave instead if you feel inclined. Both work really well. I'm also going to quickly just get rid of the release in the amp envelope section. The 303 was a staccato baseline emulator, and so we really don't need that release. Also, since we're trying to emulate an old analog synth, it's going to be nice to add a little bit of instability to the tuning. Analog's error field actually allows for some random differentiation to occur, simulating oscillator drift. Let's add a little bit of that, maybe 10%. We won't hear much of a difference, but over the course of a tune, this kind of subtle effect will add a lot of character. Now let's have a look at the filter section. One of the hallmarks of the 303 sound came from its 18 dB, or 3-pole, filter. We don't have that option in analog, and so for our purposes we're going to choose the 24 dB low-pass filter, as the resonance will behave better with it than with the 12 dB filter. It'll just give us a better opportunity to get some nice acidic squelch. So now I'm going to quickly add a little bit of white noise. White noise isn't essential in a sound like this, but virtual digital synths like analog have a tendency to sound really, really clean, and this is one of the ways in which we're going to dirty it up a little bit. I'm going to bring the color all the way up and then set it to negative 35 dB going through filter 1. Now let's activate the glide and have a listen to the pattern with the filter all the way open. As you can hear, we have one more issue to overcome here, and that's that the filter's envelope is re-triggering. We don't want that. To get a proper acid sound, we need to be able to have the envelope hold without re-triggering if two notes overlap. So let's flick it into legato mode. That sounds better. So now, let's convert this instance of analog into an instrument rack so that we can start programming some macro controls and restricting ranges so we can make this a playable synth patch. Cutoff will go to macro 1 and resonance to macro 2. In the map mode, I'm going to make the low point of the cutoff 110 Hz. This is fairly arbitrary, but if the cutoff goes below it, we don't have much character, so it's a good number. So for the resonance, I'm going to cap its high point at about 80%. Analog's filters don't self-oscillate, so there's no real bonus to pushing it to 100%, and the tone of the filter gets a little bit shrill past 80. I'm going to map the filter envelope amount to macro 3, and restrict its range so that it's only going into the positive and only up to 10, not to the full amount of 16. This will mimic the original 303's envelope amount knob. I'm going to map the filter decay to macro 4 and pull its ranges in. So let's go for 10 milliseconds to 1.5 seconds. So there's a few more really cool tweaks to set up. We're going to map glide to macro 5 and give it a range of 10% to 80%. Then we're going to set up a sort of equivalent of the 303's awesome accent feature. This is definitely not exact, but it will help mimic the effect. We're going to map the amp envelope's velocity to amp function to macro 6, and make its range run from 0 to 8. Then we're going to map the overall volume of analogs out to macro 6 as well, and set its low value to 2 and its high to minus 8. This means that when macro 6 is rolled up all the way, velocity has more of an overall effect on the volume of analogs out, but the overall out is rolled down to compensate for the volume boost, so we can get a little bit more expression in our patterns.
Next up, I'm going to dirty up the signal a little bit more. I'm going to put a saturator after analog and inside the instrument rack, and I'm going to map its drive to macro 7. Let's range restrict that. 36 dB of gain is overkill, so let's keep it at plus 10 as a peak and 0 as a low value. I'm going to throw a redux in next, and I'm going to activate its bit reduction, then put it into 8-bit mode. Again, this isn't really an attempt to create a truly accurate 303, but rather to get a nice vintage sound. Just the redux signal alone is going to be too obviously digital though, so we're going to create a separate audio effect rack out of it, and then create a bypass channel, so that we have the equivalent of a wet dry. Then we're going to roll down the redux channel so that it's at about minus 10 dB. This is just going to give us a little bit of the bit reduced signal mixed back in. I'm going to follow that up with a compressor, really just for control and transient emphasis, and so I'm going to be fairly gentle with it. I'm just going to roll the threshold down a little bit, bring the release in a little, and roll back the attack a little bit. So now we have a great sounding acidic monosynth. Now, if you were to AB this with a Roland TB303, it would be pretty obvious that it isn't one, but that's totally fine. This is a great sound overall, and is better sounding than a ton of 303 emulators that are on the market. Plus, this actually has the bonus of being made entirely within live using its existing effects and instruments. If you're wondering what Macro 8 is for, I'm using it as a volume control for a whole series of spatial distortions and effects, which I've actually included for you in this rack. <laughs> The overall sound these effects give as you blend them in is very typical of Hallmark Acid tracks from back in the day. I go over a lot more effects usage as well as a ton of synthesis techniques in the Synthesis and Sound Design Masterclass, where we look at creating vintage, cutting edge, and future sounds. Be sure and check out more info on this class, as well as download this instrument rack using the links below.